previously in Australia's history have so many opportunities existed for young women to train for such a wide range of interesting careers. More than 30 different types of occupation are available for young women who join the Women's Royal Australian Air Force, whose Air Chief Commandant is the Queen Mother. This is a passing out parade at Point Cook, Victoria, where all Women's Royal Australian Air Force recruits receive their initial training. These women have concluded their training and are now ready to take their places as qualified air women in the units of the Royal Australian Air Force. Working alongside the men of the Air Force, they will be part of a team that keeps our aircraft in the air. Young women joining the WAF indicate their preferences for a particular type of employment before enlisting and subsequent training in their chosen field will make them specialists in many phases of Air Force work. The office routine in most Royal Australian Air Force establishments is carried out by air women. They become experts in office management and permit manpower to be effectively employed elsewhere. Australian Air Force's accounting system is also handled efficiently by WAF accounting machine operators and equipment accounts clerks. They carry out their duties in all the occupations associated with a well-conducted office. Some air women elect to become tailoresses and they assist to make their fellow WAF one of the most smartly turned out groups of women in the Commonwealth. Equipment clerks are responsible for the handling of the wide variety of stores needed to maintain the RAF efficiently. The Air Force provides uniforms which air women are proud to wear. WAF equipment assistants are responsible for issuing these uniforms. Education assistants learn to handle training and teaching aids such as projection machinery and they also function as librarians to catalogue and issue the thousands of books which fill RAF libraries. This is the RAF College Library, which plays an important part in the training of the RAF's future executive officers. Some air women are trained as medical orderlies. They will work in the RAF's hospitals, which are located throughout the Commonwealth. A RAF tutor sister takes a class of medical orderlies through a series of lectures which include a study of the human anatomy and its physiology. This course fits the air woman for her role as a hospital worker. Lectures are supplemented by instruction in the handling of a wide range of equipment to be found in a modern hospital. Training aids include a Bedford model used to instruct the medical orderlies in the most efficient methods of handling and caring for a patient in a hospital bed. elect to become dental assistants after the completion of their five weeks basic training course at Point Cook. A vital role of air women is that of safety equipment worker. This work covers the whole field of the safety equipment carried in modern RAF aircraft. Care of aircraft safety equipment involves the regular inspection and refolding of parachutes. Particular care is necessary to ensure that they are always in perfect condition. Many WAF members are employed as RAF mechanical transport drivers. In this capacity they service vehicles and may be called upon to drive staff cars or light trucks. Air 
their women are trained as telephone operators and may be posted to units located in every state of the Commonwealth. The Royal Australian Air Force has mapped a great part of our continent using stereo photo mosaics. Here, air women trained as cartographers assist in the preparation of Air Force maps by this process. Air women trained as teleprinter operators work in Royal Australian Air Force centres through which all signalled messages to and from a unit must pass. Some WAF become stewardesses and in this capacity they function as dining room attendants in Royal Australian Air Force messes. Life for the air woman whose work requires her to live in at a RAF unit is interesting and well provided for. Well equipped laundries are always available with plenty of hot water. The Air Force ensures that its members live comfortably and well. Many privileges and benefits which include free accommodation and medical and dental care make service life attractive from a monetary point of view. The pay envelope for an air woman goes a lot further than that of her counterpart in civilian life when such extra benefits are taken into consideration. Service life is a complete life in which comradeship, recreation and sport play their full part. units cater for the taste of all air women. Sport, it is felt, plays an important role in service life, both socially and in keeping physically fit. Normally, WAF quarters have single rooms or rooms shared by four air women, and the standard of accommodation is high. Many Air Force recreation rooms within range of a television station are equipped with TV receivers and the attractively furnished recreation rooms provide comfortable facilities for off-duty hours. When the women of the WAF hold a dance in their recreation rooms at a RAF unit, there's always plenty of male company to provide partners. The Air Force is interested only in women who are healthy of body and of mind. And religion, which plays such an important part in most lives, has a correspondingly important place in Air Force life. Every RAF unit has chapels to permit the air women to attend regular Sunday services. The Royal Australian Air Force maintains medical services which ensure that all members of the RAF will receive adequate medical attention as required. A fine body of women, the nursing sisters and physiotherapists of the Royal Australian Air Force are employed in this work. The RAF invites qualified nursing sisters and physiotherapists to apply for short service commissions in the RAF nursing service. RAF nursing sisters and physiotherapists undertake duties at the service hospitals of RAF stations throughout the Commonwealth and its territories and at RAF establishments overseas. Nursing sisters join the RAF for a period of four years with commissioned rank.